Greetings, salutations, and all those uh, confectionery sweets. To your Fruit Loops, cornflakes, and all that. So we're back to part two of the rigging of the eye. So probably heard in the previous video that I was going to talk about doing the hierarchy, but we did that in the last video. So this is what the hierarchy looks like so far. You got a sclera peg, and you got an iris peg. You got an iris drawing. You got a sclera. Right? So what we want to do now is use the cutter module. So I'm going to have to lift these up a bit more. All of these. And basically the cutter module acts as a mask. If you know about graphic design, then you know that the mask kind of does the opposite of a real world mask. So for example, you have your face wearing a mask. You hide your face. But in graphics, your body will disappear and you'll be a floating face. So we're kind of going to be doing that now. So the next module we want is our cutter module. So we're going to take that from module library and drag it into our network view. You want to make sure you have those two open. Back to the camera view. And the cutter works kind of like this. You notice there's two up top and one at the bottom. Okay. What was I saying now? Oh yeah, so Cutter has two nodes up top. You see the two ones up top and one at the bottom. Basically, in the tops, you have one on the right and one on the left. If I was to zoom in for you, you notice one of them has a dot. And the dot means, the one with the dot means what you want to be masked. And the one on the other side means what you want the mask to be. So... Seeing as we have our eyes, why would I employ the cutter tool? If you look at our iris, so if I was to move my iris using my translate tool, oh and if you hear some noises, that's my epic wife being epic with dinner. So why would you need the cutter? Yeah, that's my wife. So, in your real eyes, you know your iris can't really fly off your eyeball like this. And that's why we would need the cutter tool. So what won't happen is when we pull the iris along the white, then you won't see the, eyeball, the iris coming off the eyeball. So I want my sclera to be my mask. So my sclera is already in my composite, which means you'll see it. So... What's going to happen is I'm going to use my sclera as my mask, so it goes into the right, I mean the left. And the iris is going to go into the right. Still need to attach the cutter to the composite. But you're probably wondering why this is still like this. It's because we still have the iris showing on top of the sclera. Because we have one... A duplicate of the iris basically according to the network a duplicate of the iris going into the cutter and then back to the composite so we don't want a duplicate we want the iris itself to directly go into the cutter and then the cutter goes to the composite but we're still not seeing our eye well there's another property on the cutter that you want to look at it's the only property really go inside you'll see one that says inverted I'm just click that box and my iris appears so if I move my iris now, this is what you're going to see. Ooh. So if you're animating your eye, you'd probably want to see something like this going on. Right? There's one thing you probably noticed. I'm not sure if you did. But you're probably asking yourself, what if I want the only the iris to only show where the white is and the black to appear? Because if you leave it like this and you go to your render view, you'll see something like this and you probably won't be pleased with that. So this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to employ the color override. And the color override basically is used to, well, override colors for one. 
and use specific colors even though you have a wide range available to you so just like I have my eye I have for my eye I have black and the sclera color I'm actually going to use the color override on the sclera so I'm bring this up again I need another little gap here strings down Y'all ever notice the word awful and awesome? Like, you'd have awesome and that would be good, but then you have awful, it's horrible. Yeah, that's kind of weird. So, let's get back to this thing. We took our color override from our module library, and now we're going to use it. I'm actually going to have the color override run through the sclera. So sclera is coming into the right side. Anytime you have a dot, that's basically what you really want to use. So sclera comes into the right side where the dot is, and the override goes into the cutter. And you don't see any change here because we have to go through the properties of the color override. Click. So you see the color override, and it shows you your palette and your colors in your palette. So my palette is named after my project name, Icoto, and it shows you all the colors that I have inside my palette. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the sclera as to override the cotto. So instead of using the whole sclera colors, the black and the sclera color, we're going to just use sclera. So Right here where you see render selected colors, you're going to click that. And it shows you some more options here, you know, palette and color. Basically, we're going to use the same, only, well, it's the only one we have. We're going to drag the sclera color in there. And we're going to click render selected colors. So we're going to click that. So it's only going to render the white. So let's see how that looks. Close that. Move our iris. And voila. Looks all nice and fanciful. So we could use the time to animate this. I'll probably go back and undo everything for the next video. So here's how you animate. Kind of like when we did the arm rigging. Those of you who haven't seen it, please look at that. Extend our frames using F5. And we're just going to use this thing and show you how it goes. So I got my eye. And say I start my eye. Here this. Put my eye here. And I want to move my eye over to up there. Or over to the right. Let's say I start here. It's a regular eye. Keyframe. move this eye over here but and then we're going to move our iris over here I'm going to rescale it so it doesn't look like something weird where the eye might be flat but you want it to kind of give it a perspective effect so I'm going to choose the scale transformation tool and just do this so when it goes across it looks something Oops. I forgot to give the original position for my iris. Just gonna undo that and come over to here. Whoops. Translate, sorry. So you see the the motion going on here with the arrows from one keyframe to the next keyframe keyframe over here so this is where I'm going to do the scaling so from my center whole eye here to this scale tool here it's gonna put this like this so now I get something like this still weird give me a second It's 
gonna undo some things. Hey, everybody makes mistakes, right? <laughs> That's just to show you what you're not supposed to do. I'm just gonna get rid of all these keyframes just so we can start from where we were before. So we have the eye. We want to start off with some keyframes for both the iris and the eye. I mean, the iris and the uh, yeah. At that, uh, I just can bring this up now. Add that too. So that's original positions. Do the same thing along here. So for 10 frames, you're going to see it look like this. Then we're going to move it at 20. So Sclera, come over here. And Iris, come over here. And scale you. So it looks like this now. Round two, looking over there. I could we'll probably do some more stuff here. Add some keyframes there. If you wanted to, you could press F6 on the keyboard. Interesting, eh? The my iris. Carry it down and rescale it. And set it down. So then we got this. And we could probably carry it over there. So here's the sliver. And moving the iris over. We scale it again. Pew 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 pew. Right. I'm gonna probably bring it back to its original position. So I'm just gonna copy that keyframe. Paste it there, copy this keyframe, control C that is, and control V here. And so, can okay, I got something here going on? So it all kind of looks like it's looping. So if I was to loop this, I could get something like this. It waits and keeps going around like that. So that's how you would animate an eyeball. So next I'm going to show you the drawing substitutions for it. So we can do something like a blink. Right? And that way you could work with a full functional eye without worrying about how much your eyes is going to be closed and how it might affect your iris. So till then, make sure you practice and I'll see you in the next tutorial. God bless. Take care.